Hey, I'm East Forest. I'm so excited to be sharing this new work with you. I just thought I'd give you uh, a little more information about the process and, and just what this whole thing is, because maybe that would give a little more context for, uh, for your listening experience. So I'm here with Radha, and she's going to ask me a few questions. What was it like to be in Ram Dass's study in Maui? It's pretty amazing. I mean, it's like, <clears throat> it felt like being in the spiritual White House, and you're also in someone's private space where you get to look at all the books that they're into and kind of see the space that they're jamming in every day. And his uh, study overlooks the North Shore of the Pacific Ocean and Maui so the windows are open and there's warm air coming in and you hear the the wind going through it's a lot of strong trade winds up there as you hear it going through all the grasses and stuff and the birds and for me hearing those sounds and being in that space is, is just really cool it's just really cool to be in someone's home base where they it's very intimate you know it's very intimate walking into that space so one thing that was interesting is when when I got there for the first time and I set up the mics and stuff and it felt like there were a lot of hoops to get through just to get to that point, like many, many months really. And I hit record, uh, somebody left, they shut the door, so it was just Ram Dass and I for the first time and he kind of like was, kind of like turned and he turns his head, he looks at me and we're just eye gazing for the first time. Which is just it's really not saying anything, just looking looking at each other. And there was a picture of Maharaji, his guru, just over his shoulder on the bookshelf, just a couple feet behind him. And the picture of Maharaji's laughing. And I looked at the picture and I suddenly felt like Maharaji was laughing at me or with me, however you want to look at it, sort of saying... It's like I had always felt that I was on the periphery of these things. You know, I was going to be like a little fly that came in, recorded some stuff, and flew out. And Ramdas was someone that I had read books about and so forth. But then I realized in that moment with the laughing Maharaji, the laughing guru, saying, like, this is you too. You're in the circle too. We're all in the circle. It's all the same thing, the same time, blah, 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 blah. And that really blew my heart open. And I looked back at Ramdas's eyes, and he was like, grinning and and sort of laughing and I could almost like he was reading my mind and being like yeah man this is it so from there we were off to the races ask some questions ask a question and he would he would riff and, and, and answer for a while 15 30 30 minutes sometimes or longer and then I'd ask another one and that's sort of how the process was The questions I asked Ramdas, I did have a, just a rough idea, but no, I didn't have a lot of questions pre-prepared, and that was nerve-wracking. I felt like I should, but there was an intuitive hit in me that it was really important that in the moment I would just sort of feel what needed to be asked, and that that was sort of like a transmission, because I felt that it wasn't so much me dictating what... Um, what I thought should be asked, but more like I was listening for what wanted to be asked because there are these greater questions. And I was also wanting to trust that it would fit together in pieces of a pie. Uh, and I wanted to give Ramdas the space to talk about what he wanted to talk about, but he definitely was waiting for prompts. So uh, that was special to be able to be like, hey, if, if, like, if you had 10 questions to ask Ramdas, what would they be? So I'm, I don't know. I didn't have a plan going in. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty much every time I asked a, a question, the first thing he would say, like the first phrase was funny or like poignant or illustrative, like really clever. Like when I asked him uh, this long question about psilocybin and the new research going on and how this could help us in a tool and blah, blah, blah. And he gets into his space psilocybin is my friend <laughs> so that that's a perfect example of like and then when i went back and and put together like you know his riff on psilocybin for instance 
it was uh, p- perfect. You know, the perfect opener, this beautiful arc. It's exactly what you hear in the song. And that just goes to show the mastery of that guy being able to, to put together what I would... I kept telling him that it was all poetry. It's perfect poetry. He thought that was very funny, but it was. It was. It's beautiful poetry the man puts out. I didn't get into the pre-recorded Ram Dass material at first because there's so much of it. It was overwhelming. There's 50,000 hours of amazing stuff. And I didn't know where to start. But the real reason is all of the field recordings I've ever used in all of my music ever have been things that I recorded myself. And I did that, one, because I like using field recordings that come to me, so to speak, stuff that's in my life. And there's there's feels like a magic to that. There's some kind of alchemy. And so if, just like for this, it felt like it was important that we, we got new recordings. And I also, I find it, really important to have Ram Dass's voice now at 87 years old and w- what he wants to speak to now and the relevancy of that uh, today in our modern times. And the only way to really do that in my mind is to let him decide what he wants to say and have him talk now. And I wanted to go there with a nice microphone and get a really great recording of, of Ram Dass today. And so... That's what we did. But I remember I got some pushback on, on the idea of going out there. And I said to, uh, to Raghu, the executive director, I said, look, even if I go out there, fly all the way out to Hawaii, and he's, he's not well enough to do it or whatever, I just need to look him in the eye, soul to soul, and say, this is happening. Thank you. you know, and, and that was the main priority. I just felt like if I'm doing an album around his legacy and his work, I really wanted to just look him in the eyes and, and, and acknowledge that it's happening. So that's what we did. I got the inspiration for doing the record in the first place. I, I had an idea of doing a record with 13 spiritual teachers where everyone had a track. Like, think the Dalai Lama, Ram Dass, 13 grandmothers, and so forth. Um, but m- my manager, to his wisdom, said, I think you should focus on one. <laughs> and he, he suggested Ram Dass. But he said that because uh, I once answered a question to him. He was asking me how I would want my work to be remembered. And I said I'd want it to be remembered in the same way that Ram Dass's work is remembered, that it's something that was full of truth and felt like a gift and something that will last for generations upon generations. And so I think something in there planted a seed that he helped reflect that back to me one day where he's like, you should do the whole thing with Ram Dass. That'd be amazing. So uh, as fate would have it, we did it. The songs, a lot of them started from piano because that's sort of the instrument I often start from. But I really was w- looking to to listen to the teaching that Ram Dass put forth and then think like a composer writing a soundtrack for a film. Like what would work best to support this message, this teaching? What's going to amplify this in the best way? So for some of those, that's just piano and Ram Dass. I think one of them, actually. But then others, the piano disappears and is replaced by other instruments, whether that's strings or electronic drums or vocalists or w- whatever. And that's just a process of kind of listening to what wants to be. And um, I just kind of hear it in my head. And I uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's really hard to describe. But a lot of them start from piano. And, and some of these songs I had beforehand. And some of them I wrote afterwards. Um, and some actually I still need to write. Because uh, the, the process of this album is still unfolding. Collaborating in general is a great thing because people are bringing to the table skills that you don't have. So most obviously Ram Dass was bringing to the table gold. And so it was great to like, normally I write a song and that's, that's, that's the thing, right? But then I got to, to 
weave in and bring Ramdas's work into this, which was just amazing. So uh, the same thing with uh, Christian Doss, Trevor Hall, for instance, when Mind Karma, the song, was one that I was struggling with. I didn't really, I couldn't, I don't know, I just couldn't, it wasn't gelling. And when Trevor decided to sing on that one, that was his choice, then it finally unfolded for me. And I was like, oh, now it feels like a song. Now it's now it's something different. And that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that collaborator adding their their thought process that's totally outside of mine to that. So for me, it's it's almost always one of like, happy discovery when I get to see what they're coming up with and get to work with that and it's an honor and it's just a way to make something bigger which is exactly why we're bringing in featured artists select featured artists for this project is a way of just making that celebration of Ram Dass's ideas bigger and richer and so it's it's a great it's a great process and I learn a lot too which is wonderful Thank you to the Love Server Member Foundation, Raghu Marcus, everybody over there, of course, Ram Das, everyone on my team, Radha, everyone supporting me through this, Trevor Hall and Christian Das. I might be forgetting some folks, but uh, this is really is just the beginning of a story and a journey. I just want to thank everyone for their vision and coming together to help make this whole thing possible. And for you, for listening, because there really is no other point. I do do this because the process is a medicine for me, but the next other half of that polarity is uh, when it reverber- reverberates in someone else. So thanks for diving in. It means a lot. I'm really excited that this music is finally getting out into the world. It's been such a beautiful, amazing process. It's like creating a seed and now we're planting it and then we'll watch the tree grow and the fruits that come off that is your experience. And I'm just super, super excited to hear about what that experience is and for this just to have a life of its own. So let's let's dig into it. Enjoy this. Enjoy this work. East Forest Ram Das. Have at it.